Hi, welcome to AP Calculus BC. This is the text notes from Calculus Extended from Taylor and Shaw. And so we're going to go through some of these examples. This should be reviewed, so I'm going to stop, and you're going to have to probably try some of these yourself. Hopefully you remember a lot of it and go from there. So first of all, we start off with some right triangle trig. So we have some, uh, a right triangle here. We find the missing side. This is just Pythagorean triple. Then with theta, you got to reference your theta angle here. And so we're going to look at that. And sine of theta, sine of theta is going to be the opposite over adjacent. So we're going to get 4 over 5 here. So I'm going to write 4 over 5. And if you forget all those, Sokoto is the guy who will get you there. All right? So 3, 4, 5 triangle, if we do the tangent and the secant. See if you can try those and then pause this and come back and see how you did. So the tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So from this angle here, opposite and adjacent, secant is just the reciprocal of the cosine. And so I get the 5 over 3 from there. Example 2, find the following. If theta is an angle in standard position whose terminal side passes through the point negative 5, 2. And so we're going to try to draw this. This would be my point, negative 5, 2. And that's the coordinates of those, that point right there, negative 5, 2. And what we want to do with that now is find out what is the sine of theta. Well, if you remember the sine of theta on the coordinate plane, that would just be the y coordinate over your r. So on the coordinate plane, we have the cosine is x over r, sine is y over r, and then the tangent is y over x. We need to find r, so we're going to go do that right here. r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. From this, the 5 and the 2, we get square root of 29. Then we just put those relationships together. Pause this and try each one of those trig functions. So if we find the sine, it's 2 over the square root of 29. That comes from our y coordinate over the r. And then the cosecant, that's just reciprocal of the sine. Uh, your teacher may ask you to go ahead and rationalize that denominator. Personally, I don't care. And then here we have square root of 29 over 2, which is just the reciprocal of the sine. And then the cotangent, here you have the tangent, which is y over x. Now the cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of that, x over y. So that's all I do is take the x-coordinate over the y-coordinate. Okay, so we have the next section, draw the angles in standard position, and go ahead and make reference angles to find the cosine of 210. I prefer to do all this in radians, but here we can refresh a little bit with degrees. But this class is all in radians. So let's think about this, and then you just relate it over to the radians. You should be fine. Draw, first of all, 210 degrees. So I drew 210 degrees here. We can then draw the reference angle, which is in the first quadrant, going this way. So that would be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And then we know that this measurement is square root of 3 over 2, and this one's 1 half. Since the 210 is in the third quadrant, we're going to have a negative value on the x-coordinate. And so I'm going to get negative square root of 3 over 2. That would be the cosine of 210. So here now I've drawn 315 degrees going around here, and I have my angle. If I want my reference angle, that's going to be in the first quadrant. Notice that that's going to be a 45, 45, 90. The relationship between the three sides is square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and then the hypotenuse is 1. That's my edge right here. So what happens is that my x and y are both the same, except for down here in the fourth quadrant, what's going to happen is that 1 is positive and 1 is negative. So I'm going to end up with a negative 1 for my tangent because it is the y over the x. Example 4, what we have now is 2 pi is equal to 360. We want to convert these things. And so we know that pi is the same thing as 180. Both are this, represent the semicircle. And so then we can uh, convert just from this fact right here. So if I look at pi over 2 and I want to convert it, well, I know pi is 180. 180 divided by 2, I'd get 90. 180, I'm sorry, yeah, 180 divided by 4 would be 45 degrees. Pi over 3 would be 60 degrees. And then pi over 6 would be 30 degrees. So you need to know all those things. 
but really we try to really think about just strictly in radians. Now if we convert 5 pi over 4, if we're going down to this example down here, example 5, 5 pi over 4, so 5 pi over 4 just turns out to be 5 times my pi over 4 here, which would be 45, and so that would be equal to 2, 2, 5. 270 is down here at the bottom. I like to call that 3 pi over 2. That's what we're going to do in this class. Really, I don't want you converting. You should just know 3 pi over 2. And then negative 120. If I look at negative 120, well, that would be like this 60, except for two of them. So that's going to be 2 pi over 3. And so it's going to be negative 2 pi over 3. Let's figure out this on the drawing. So if I take the negative 120, negative is in this direction, counter, uh, clockwise direction, and we start from the initial side going to the terminal side. Negative 120 turns out to be the same thing as negative 2 pi over 3. More examples. We want to draw the angle now in standard position and make reference angles to find the following without a calculator. So if I take this one, cosine of negative 3 pi over 4, that's going to be halfway over here. And when I do that, that's going to be either square root of 2 over 2 or negative, um, or negative square root of 2 over 2 since it's in the third quadrant. Oh, I keep on writing my 2s that look like 3s. Negative square root of 2 over 2. Then the cosecant of 5 pi over 3. If I go 5 pi over 3, that would be in a counterclockwise direction. I go over 3 pi over 2, and I'm going to be about here. That's going to be in the fourth quadrant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. So this is 1 over the sine of 5 pi over 3. Sine of 5 pi over 3 is negative square root of 3 over 2. That would be my y coordinate. So I have 1 over negative square root of 3 over 2, which turns out to be negative 2 over the square root of 3. Once again, rationalize if your teacher asks. Or make sure you can recognize that as 2 squared or 3 over 3. On the unit circle, you should know these values and know them extremely well. Your pre-calculus teacher, I'm sure, did an outstanding job with you in having you memorize these and know how to do these. So why don't you go ahead and fill these in and then come back and after you pause and check your answers. Check out these first three that we have. We have... 1 half for the sine of pi over 6, because that's in the first quadrant. Sine of 0 is 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1, because remember, the cosine is the x-coordinate. The sine is the y-coordinate, and that would be right here, starting off at 0. Try the next ones. We try the next few, and then we got the sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, because that's up here on the unit circle, so the y-coordinate would be 1. And then the tangent of negative pi over 2, people get this confused. 0 on top, is that 0 or is that undefined? Well, 0 on top means that you get 0 overall. 0 on the bottom, when I'm talking about a fraction, would give you an undefined. So let's look at where those values are. The tangent of negative pi over 2 would be down here. So we're down at this point right here. So this is 0, negative 1. And so if I do my y over x, it's going to be negative 1 over 0. This is undefined. Division by 0 is undefined. In a similar but different situation, if I have the tangent of pi, if I'm right here, this point and its coordinates would be negative 1, 0. And so if I take the y over the x, that would be 0 over negative 1, which does equal 0. Make sure you understand the difference between those two. Try the last two and see what you get. The last two examples deal with this 3 pi over 2, so I have 0, negative 1 as my coordinates. And so the cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. Remember, one co per pair. Cosecant, it already has the co, so the other function that is the reciprocal function with it is the sine. And so I take the y coordinate and take the reciprocal of that, which just would give me negative 1 again. Then the cosine of 3 pi over 2 would be just the x-coordinate, so I get 0.